Steny Hoyer objects, and, and tip of the hat to uh, Sue in the chat room uh, who passed along this link. House Majority Whip Steny Hoyer is objecting to a series of rules that will govern the 14th, 114th House of Representatives. Particularly, he fears language that would permit the expansion of dynamic scoring, uh, a, a method used to analyze policy changes. Right? Isn't that isn't that great language? Right. Dynamic scoring predicts the impact of fiscal policy changes by forecasting the effects of economic agents, reactions to incentives created by policy. So Hoyer, this would allow tax cuts with a promise of future, but uncertain, you know, blah, blah. Anyhow, he says this is not a good sign for the year to come. Uh, talking to reporters today, he is concerned that with dynamics, that dynamic scoring will seek to politicize the Congressional Budget Office. He is absolutely right. Now, they are referring to these as proposed rules. Uh, this is a story from yesterday, though. This is January 6th. I'm, I think the rules passed. Oops. Uh-oh. Losing my, my sunglasses here. I think the rules passed. So we'll see where this goes. Um, Corky just a minute ago made the point. By the way, Jim Jim Javinsky, our, our uh, video guy, he said uh, we should call it dynamic screwing rather than dynamic scoring because it's screwing the average American. And it's, or, you know, it's, it's helping out the Koch brothers. I mean, it's going to help out the billionaires. Billionaires are going to <laughs> dynamic score. It is wonderful for them. It, it justifies more tax cuts for rich people and big corporations. But, you know, with the justification that, oh, it'll reduce the deficit. Keep in mind, when Reagan tried this, it tripled our national debt. It was the fastest increase in the national debt outside of wartime in the history of the United States, all the way back to the George Washington administration. That's how badly it worked. And the Republicans introduced it yesterday. As I predicted a week ago, when nobody even knew what dynamic scoring was. And I said, just keep, you know, I, I, I know how these guys think. It's, it's not a secret. They're right up front. Uh, what astonishes me is that, by and large, the American people, because the American media won't say it, don't realize that the agenda of the Republican Party is very simple and straightforward. It's more money for the rich, less benefits for the poor, the, quote, le- less government or smaller government is merely a, a a catchphrase that means no social safety net. To, the, the Republican mantra is to hell with unemployment benefits. And I don't understand why the Democrats didn't run on this last November, you know, two months ago. The Republicans have been holding hostage for 14 months now an extension of long term unemployment benefits. That, to me, is one hell of a big deal. But the media refuses to talk about it. I know that uh, Bernie Sanders, Peter DeFazio, uh, 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 Keith Ellison, there's a number of of good members of Congress who have spoken out and spoken out loudly about how the Republicans were holding unemployment benefits hostage. It never gets reported in the media. We have a, a corporate media that serves corporate interests, period. I mean, it's very simple. And the right wing message is that media's I mean that's that's their song. And and you say, well, wait a minute, I thought right wingers were like, you know, they didn't like uh, you know, brown people coming in from Mexico and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. They use race or they don't like gay people. Yes, they use race, they use homophobia, they they use these things to bring along the low information voters. The, the 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 rural Louisiana voters, the the, the people, the, the red state voters, the people who who basically they get their information from Fox so-called news, which is about half the time wrong on their facts, according to MediaMatters.org. But what astonishes me is most people don't realize that the Republican, the, the, the entire Republican agenda. Too much regulation. What does that mean? It means that companies that pollute like Coke Industries, should be allowed to pollute more or shouldn't be penalized when they when they do pollute. I mean, you know, Coke Industries was hit with 97 criminal charges sometime back from the EPA, uh, if my recollection is correct. And and apparently they're still stinging about it because uh, the Coke brothers have announced that they want to change the criminal code in the United States. I think that might have something to do with Coke Industries having been charged as a criminal. Hmm. And they say, uh, 
and we're we're going to throw some money to the NAACP here, or one of these, one of the ACLU. I forget which group they gave some money to. They said, you know, here's some money to help. You know, we're going to try and do something about drug sentencing. That is. In, you know, in magic tricks, it's like watch my right hand while my left hand actually does the trick, right? The the left hand is flipping the lever that's going to put the rabbit in the hat. The right hand is what the audience is looking at because it's waving around. You know, what they're doing is they're waving around their right hand saying, hey, look at this. We're going to give some money to, to sentencing guidelines uh, for drug, drug, you know, and do away with the, you know, it's good stuff. We all agree on it. But the, re- the real reason that they're going down that road is because uh, we want to change the criminal code so that polluters don't go to jail. Or banksters don't go to jail or whatever. And it's not just the Koch brothers. I mean, this is just right across the whole the whole Republican spectrum. The Republican Party is about rich people and big corporations, period. End of sentence. And the continuous rants that you hear out of Hannity and Limbaugh and, and Fox so-called news and all, you know, and, and all these right wing sites about how Obama's a secret communist and a socialist and and uh, Obamacare is tyranny and blah, 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 blah. You add it all up. You can boil it all down to a really, really simple agenda. If it serves the interests of the rich, in their, from their point of view, it's good. If it serves the interests of working class people in the United States, from their point of view, that's bribery. Right? That's politicians pandering to the voters. That's politicians buying votes. That, that was the charge against FDR in 1935 when he passed Social Security, that he was buying the votes of old people. He cut poverty in the United States in half among elderly people by passing Social Security. And then LBJ cut it further with the Great Society, dramatically. I mean, LBJ cut poverty in half in six years with the Great Society. And in both cases, the Republicans said, oh, you're just trying to buy the votes of of average working people. Well, of course, you represent them. They want this. You do it. But the Republicans are also trying to buy votes. Only the votes that they're trying to buy aren't just votes. They're also trying to buy money with their legislation. In other words, they pass dynamic scoring. And what happens? All the rich people who are going to see their taxes go down, they write checks to Republican candidates and to the Republican Party. Anyhow, your call's up next. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. When is the media in the United States going to start calling these guys out? I mean, Bernie's doing it. Steny Hoyer's doing it. It's not getting covered, though.